Hey, it's Justin. I've got exciting news about Fusion 360. Advanced nesting is available for preview now. Let me show you how it works. Fusion 360 just released an all new advanced nesting extension. You might have seen previous videos we put out on arrange nesting, which is a simplified nesting tool with little control over how your parts get put on the sheets. Advanced nesting is the real deal, a full-fledged nesting tool for Fusion 360. I've had the chance to use it in development for the past few months and I can tell you it's pretty useful as is and has great promise for future features. It's definitely geared towards people like myself who need a nesting tool for their business, not so much a hobbyist user. Appropriately, this nesting extension preview is available to all but personal users. These new features will be an extension similar to the manufacturing extension that's already out, but instead called nesting and fabrication extension, or something similar. It's slated to come out sometime in 2021. For now, the preview is free to try, as always. Maybe. I'm curious, what would you pay for a solid Fusion 360 nesting extension? To get started, we'll go to the upper right and click your profile and then preferences. From there, you'll click preview at the bottom of the left column. In the center, search for nesting and you should see nesting and manufacture. Check that box, then click apply and okay. Now that we've got the preview turned on, we can check out what's been added. Let's go over the manufacturing space and then click the fabrication tab. Most notably, you'll see the brand new Nest button, and then in Manage, there's Component Sources and Process Material Library. We'll go through what all this means, but first we need to cover some nesting basics. You may have also noticed that I'm using Big Sur for Mac on a new MacBook Pro with the Apple M1 chip. It's been pretty great, and we have a new video about that and how to install it. See the card here for that video. To use nesting in Fusion 360, you'll need to know a few things first. All Fusion 360 nesting needs top-level components. I'll show you what this means in a bit. Also, advanced nesting uses the physical material and thickness of each component to combine parts for nesting on sheets. And last, nesting uses the manufacturing model. It's now default anyway, and it's a bit of a change in how you work in the manufacturing space, but we'll go through that too. There's a lot to learn in the new advanced nesting extension, so I'll cover what you need to know to get started in this video, and we'll make more videos following up on more aspects of this tool. Let's use the cabinet model that I've used in previous videos. Let's say we wanted to CNC route the parts of this model. If you look at the browser tray on the left, you'll see it has a series of expandable items. Nest only looks for the objects at the very first level, not the ones indented. If there is more than one body inside a component, this will cause issues as well. If you haven't modeled every item as a unique top-level component that you want to nest, you'll need to do that. Luckily, there's an easy way. Expand the component you want to create components for, and then shift-click the bodies inside. Next, right-click and select Create Components from Bodies. They'll still be nested inside the other component, so now you need to drag them out of the parent component. Just rinse and repeat. I'll quick fix these other multi-body components. There we go, all my components are ready for nesting. All right, let's jump into nesting. To do that, let's switch to manufacturing. A little note of warning here. At some point, I can't see it since mine is already done and you only really have to do it once. It's going to ask you if you want to create a default material and packaging preset. You do. That'll save in your team assets so it's shared between your team. That's sort of like your CAM tool library for nesting materials. Anyway, thought I'd just give you that note. We'll nest some parts, but first we need to go through some of the new terminologies. When we open manufacturing and go to the fabrication tab, you probably want to start at process material library. These are the material options for your sheets that we'll use to nest with. When you open that up, you'll see I have a material plywood that is 0.72 inches thick. There's also a sub-item called packaging, which is what Fusion has labeled each piece of material that you use to nest with. Think like a 4x8 sheet of plywood or a 8 inch by 8 foot board. You can duplicate and add more packaging items as you need. Each material has its own settings. You can obviously change material name, thickness, and get into settings below that I haven't needed. When you move over into the packaging tab, there are different options. So I'll add another size of packaging, or I like to think of that as a sheet size. 
On the next tab, nesting shows the options that you're allowing parts to be oriented on this specific material. You can change all of this each time you nest something, but this is where you set the default settings per material. For now, I'd leave the rotation items all checked and then go to positioning on the right. You can set the grain direction of the material. This is using the Cartesian coordinate system, so zero degrees would face right on the screen. The frame width, or our, I call the border, is the space between your parts and the edge of the material. I start with 0.5 inches typically. The atom separation, or also known as the part-to-part -part spacing, is up to what your tool width or cutter kerf is. I like to use 0.3 inches. All right, let's push OK. In the left side, let's right-click on the packaging and duplicate to add another packaging item. We're going to call this 48 by 48, which is just a half-size sheet of plywood. And then we'll rename the top one to 48 by 96, because that's what it is. All right, well, that was information dense, but you can come back here and look over it again if you didn't catch it all. Let's try a quick nest of these parts. First, it's going to look for parts that are similar in physical material and then by thickness. We can adjust those settings before or during nesting. Let's get something nested. You should see the nest button, but if not, you need to click the fabrication tab. Where it says single value in the job quantity field, you can set one quantity for all your components or multi-value lets you choose, well, multiple values. Let's leave it at single. Below that, you have the number of parts for each component you want to make. Let's leave that at one for now too. We'll skip stack size for now and you'll want to leave the last two boxes checked. On the shape tab, you select which of the components you want to nest. We want them all, so we're going to leave them all checked. Next packaging shows you the available sheets or packaging that you can use to nest with. On global parameters, you can choose a corner position, meaning which corner do the parts shift towards on the sheet. The other item to look at is the remnant optimization. Let's make that length and width. On output, we'll leave that as is too. So now we can just push OK. Depending on the complexity and number of parts, you'll see a bit of processing and then suddenly nested sheets. If you're like me, the first time this happened, it was pretty magical. Now look over in your browser and under manufacturing model, there should be an item called nesting study one. That's what we just created. Inside that, there will be nested sheets. And if there's more than one material or thickness, that will be sorted out as well. A great way to look at all the sheets at once is to right click the nest node and choose compare. Compare lets you see the nested parts in a nice all-in-one view. When looking at the nest study in the browser, you can activate each sheet just like you would a cam setup to activate one at a time. These are just manufacturing models at this point, but soon we'll make it a cam setup. As you can see, you can orbit around the nest model parts just like you would anywhere else. So that worked great, but let's say we want to change the orientation for a few parts on their sheets. This is one obvious difference between arranged nesting and advanced nesting, is that you can control how the parts are laid out. Without any other instruction, nesting is going to put parts on sheets as efficiently as it can, without regard to desired orientation. In most materials, you have some kind of material grain, like wood or a print pattern, or something that a designer will definitely care about. To tell Fusion how to constrain part orientation, we need to right click and edit the nest. If you click over to the shape tab, you'll see each component again. You'll notice that you can't just edit things, you first have to turn off bind. Now I'm no big fan of that word here, but bind essentially means link to the material settings. Once you uncheck each component's bind box, you can then make changes to the check boxes to the right, which dictate the part orientation. You can also set how many of each item you want to nest under quantity and allow mirroring or not. Trust me when I say this aspect will take a bit of futzing to get right, making changes, seeing how the nest results turn out, and then back again. If you jump over to global parameters, you can override the material properties and change the frame width or item separation. Often I need to reduce these two settings to fit more parts on a sheet. Let's click OK and see the updated nest. We can activate each sheet to see the parts, but for me, the best way to see this is to use compare by right-clicking the nest node. Another big benefit of built-in nesting diffusion is once you've nested parts on the sheets, you can almost automatically create cam setups for each of those sheets. When you're happy with your nest setup, right-click the nest node and select create setups for manufacturing model. 
Watch the magic happen here. Each of these sheets turns into a setup down below. If you edit one of those setups, you'll see that the stock is there from the nest settings and all the model parts are correlated to the sheet components from the nesting study above. Pair this with smart cam templates and you'll go from a 3D model of a cabinet to cutting it in fractions of the time you're used to. There's no reason to just stop with one. You can create multiple nest studies to compare which is more beneficial for your scenario. We often use this to compare, say, one quantity of a part and then multiple quantities because customers usually like to see different price breaks. One last feature that you like. You can add parts from other files into one nest. Go to the Fabrication tab and then select Component Sources. You'll see all the components already in the model. You can set quantities or rotation settings here. This won't affect your existing studies but any future ones. Down at the bottom left there's a plus sign. Here you'll see all of your data panel information and you can select multiple items to add to your nest sources. Let's use this box model to nest with our cabinet model. This is super helpful because a certain other CAD software that rhymes with colored shirts likes to output a whole bunch of individual parts that we often receive and need a nest. I'll create a new nest study with the new and old parts together. You'll see that these nest as two different nests, five and six, because the material and thickness don't match with what we already had in the model. That's fixable, don't worry. Just like any Fusion linked file, if the linked file changes externally, you'll have to choose to update sources before the file will change in our current file. I'll open up the box file and change a parameter, then save it. When we go back to the cabinet model, you'll see it's letting us know that the linked file is out of date. You can leave it like that, but if you want to update, you can update the linked file like so. After this, you just need to generate your nest again and everything will be updated. So that's the advanced nesting extension tidied up into a 12 minute bow. What did you think? There are some other great features that came out with this release, notably the improved chamfer tool my friend Kevin of Product Design Online made a video on. I'll put a card to his video here. Hope you enjoyed the video, catch you in the next one. If you wanna support the channel, but don't want a Patreon-like subscription, buy me a coffee is the perfect option. The idea of buy me a coffee is to offer someone a cash equivalent of buying them a drink as a thank you. It's a one-time thing to show your support for the channel and keeps the content and coffee flowing. Look for the link below for buy me a coffee. If you want to get our cat and cam models that we show in the videos, subscribe to our Patreon at cnc.money. Thanks. If you haven't subscribed, it's imperative you do. I know if you watched this far, you obviously enjoyed it a little. Thanks, bro.